You went to the premiere last night? I didn't go. Didn't go. No, because I'm, you know, I'm rehearsing for uh, for a Broadway show right oh, now. Nice. So nice. I'm just like awesome. Zilla Valentine. <laughs> um, I I was in the movie theater really rooting for your character. Oh, dope. Teen John Ambrose. Come okay. on, baby. Come on, baby. The, the, you, the but the character's a whole different person yeah. in the first one. Mm -hmm. I talked to Jenny about it. Can you talk about? Uh, landing this role and what that process was like for you? Yeah, I mean, there was a conversation that was had kind of early on between my team. I wasn't even in the conversation. I guess my, uh, a team member of mine, uh, one of my agents, was having this conversation with uh, with a producer. and It was a timing thing, like I was working on another project and like, will this be able to work out? And uh, they came back and they were like, is he, is, is he still available or available now? And so I just wrapped this project in New York. I went back home to LA. I was home for a day, got up the next morning, lost my passport during a renovation, mm. had to get up like at the butt crack of dawn, was under the weather, like had to get a new passport, fly up to Vancouver, read with Lana, flew directly back down to LA, got the call that it was that we were gonna move forward and, and packed up and I think like four days later was back in Vancouver and nice. started the process and was welcomed into a family. Genuinely, I mean like obviously the first film did pretty well so <laughs> the fandom is real um i'm sure if you were at the screening last night i, I heard that it was pretty loud yeah. um so so i was in there talking to the screen like it was a tyler perry movie <laughs> oh no <laughs> and, yeah, and oh no he did not yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love that great. um peter does some it was he he's a little bit of a, a mess up he's a, a screw up a little bit of a train wreck in, in this one isn't it Just a little and, bit. and i feel like john was so perfect can you can you just talk a little bit about when it comes to relationships? Yeah. How come the good guy sometimes he wins, sometimes he doesn't? It, it's just that sometimes he doesn't, sometimes he doesn't. If he doesn't right now, it doesn't mean that he's going to continue to lose. Um, I was always the nice guy growing up, and and even had like a girl that I had feelings for, um, that I had a long term friendship with. Actually, I mean we we knew each other. When we were very young, like her brother and I were, we were in kindergarten through like sixth grade together. Um, it was her, it was his sister. And then like years later, we're in high school, college, we reconnected. And, um, you know, I expressed that I had feelings for her after like uh, talking for a little mm -hmm. while. And she, she was oblivious to the feelings, first of all. And then when I like, she was talking about this guy that she, that she had been talking to, whom I would, I didn't even know about at all. That, that's when I was like, oh, okay, listen, I thought, okay, here's where I thought we were. And I thought that I was making it clear. I hate that it wasn't. Can we talk about that for a second? And so we, we did. And I even like posed the question to her, why the, why the broody bad guy? She was like, it's just like at my age right uh -huh. now, like it's just like the appealing thing. She's like, you're the marrying type and I'm not ready for that. That hurts so much. Like a dagger, <laughs> dude. And I've always known that because I'm like a family-oriented guy. Like I, for, since I, for as long as I can remember, I'm, a, I'm kind of an old soul. Like for as long as I can remember thinking about life and like what I want that to look like for me, it's a wife. It's a bunch of kids. I'm from the South. Like it's a wife and like a big family. And um, that's what I've always just kind of like aimed for is like dating a girl and being like, okay, is she the forever person? That's why the only person I've ever told that I love is my fiance. Yeah. Like I, I hold on to those words, you know, because it's, it's, it's powerful, it's big. And so I think that like where John Ambrose is concerned and like, are you team Peter, are you team John? There's obviously a palpable, very electric connection between Peter Kavinsky and Laura Jean Covey that you know, you want to see work out, especially because it's a real relationship. They're like figuring things out. They go through some trials in this film and whatnot. And then where John Ambers is concerned, that was her first love. There's obviously some real parallels in how they both function, which is the intimidating factor for Peter. John Ambrose is oblivious to the fact that there's even a relationship going on over there, through no fault of his own, finds himself in this love triangle. Is that challenging for people? Yeah, especially if you grow to like John Ambrose because he's a likable guy. He's kind, he's charming, he's intentional, he's got a good heart, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But like, I'm Team Peter for, Jordan is Team Peter for Lara Jean right now. The marrying type though, who, who I think that she should end up with for forever? John Ambrose, without a doubt. I'm Tom. I'm Team John because Noah stole your answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! With, thank you for taking the time to chat. It's me. my pleasure. It. It's really nice when to meet you. When you're in the treehouse and, and you just display that sadness, I was Team John all day. When you oh. find out, like, oh, there, and you, the character just breaks. Yeah. I was like, I'm Team John. Oh, dude, my guy. You thank you for right. that, bro. I really appreciate thank that, you. man. Appreciate it. I love you. I love your steez, dude. Thank appreciate. You.